The Columbia Broadcasting System presents Orson Welles and the Mercury Theater in a special series of broadcasts about the other Americas. <laughs> Americans, this is Orson Welles. It's two days after Christmas and a Sunday night at that. Do you feel as though your belt were trying to get a half Nelson on your waistline? Are you wondering where somebody who gave you something got it so you can take it back and exchange it for something you wanted instead? Has somebody in your household been heard to remark that it's been a nice Christmas, but she's glad it's over? Is your tree starting to shed? Yes? Yes. I don't care how many eggnogs you didn't have. You've got that Christmas hangover. So have we. The incidents in the Mercury Theater of package-tying thumb, Christmas tree decorating, back strain, and shopper's feet is just as great as in your family. Frankly, the script for this broadcast didn't exist until last night. We were all sitting around staring at each other, our eyes glazed with Christmas cheer, numbly wondering how to get started. And there was a knock at the door. That's the best way I know to start a story. We won't stop for sound effects because you can imagine it. That uh, knock on the door. Somebody opened it, and in came Mr. Martin Stone. Mr. Stone is a big man, and his mouth had a place in it for a cigar, but the cigar wasn't there. He introduced himself, and we gave him a drink, and he told us this story. Now we're going to try to tell it to you, the way we heard it. The story needs a name, so we'll call this one... The Bad Will Ambassador. Stone. Martin Stone. Thanks. Don't mind if I do. I'm an American representative of an export house with branches all over South America, Central America. Brazil, only Argentine, Venezuela, Peru, Puerto Rico, Mexico. Business is good. Could be better, but... Well, that's my business. Make it better. I didn't come here to talk about myself, though. I, I want to tell you... I'll tell you about him. Who? Don't ask me. Just let me tell you what happened. I can't even say exactly what he looked like. Smallish, and he wasn't so small. He was, wasn't young. He wasn't old, either. Oh, his voice. It, it was soft. Like a soft breeze. Kind of voice that makes you think of your own voice. Like you're talking too loud or too hard. Still don't know his name. I looked it up, but wasn't in there. Guess it doesn't matter. Met him first in Buenos Aires about ten days ago. I had everything planned. Eight days to finish up my business in South America and get back home in time for Christmas and JL's sales rally. Got to plan things if you want to get them done. Yeah, reservations on Pan American right through from Argentina to New York City. Uh, here, boy, grab these bags and weigh them. That's my plane. Yes, sir. Well, Senor Stone, we've given you up for good. Never give up Martin Stone till the plane leaves the ground. Yes, Senor. Never but, missed a uh... plane or a train in my life. No use putting that on the scales. Weighs 39 pounds and 14 ounces, exactly. Well, what's wrong? The plane hasn't left, has it? Uh, Mr. Stone, uh, you see, we didn't think you were coming. And someone who has to get to Rio de Janeiro by tonight, well, we give him your seat. Your what? Oh, we would not have done it, Mr. Stone, but he is going to have Christmas with his family. I know. He's only nine years old, sir, and if he does not go on this plane, he will lose an entire... Wait a day. minute. Are you trying to tell me you want me to give up my seat? Oh, of course not, Mr. Stone, if you do not wish to... We told the dispatcher he is to take the little boy and his luggage off the plane. It will take only a moment. Well, naturally, I hate to upset the youngster's plans, but after all, I got a little fellow of my own whose heart would just about break if his daddy isn't back home for Christmas. Oh, that's quite all right, Mr. Stone. Is that the youngster there? Yes, Mr. Stone. Uh, hi there, youngster. Uh, no, I'm sorry to disappoint you. He you understand English? No, Mr. He speaks only Spanish and Portuguese. Well, he's got plenty of time to get an education. Here, young man, you take this and buy yourself a pocket knife or a football or anything you want. Come on, won't bite you. Hey, what's wrong? That's when I first saw him. 
standing there. Right in front of me. You see, he's very young. He would not understand. Yeah. Isn't my responsibility. An awful lot of kids in the world. Still, a man does hate to disappoint a kid, naturally. Naturally. Especially during the Christmas season. It's a pity you will miss the Argentine Navidad. Yeah, yes, yes. Very interesting native customs out there. I don't know. Give me Christmas back home in the States. My name's Stone. Uh, Indestructible Toys and Novelties. Here's my car. Leaving on this plane? No, I'm not. Would you believe it? They don't even have Santa Claus in this country. Uh, you're not an Argentinian, are you? No, I'm not. Always got to be careful. Got to use tact down here in these countries. You never know who you're talking to. Like I was saying, now, what's Christmas without Santa Claus? No Santa, no presents, no presents, no fun. Mr. Stone, here in the Argentine, that Christmas is very serious to them. Yeah, but what about the kids, Mr. Senor? I didn't catch the name. Senor, that is enough. Glad to know you. Merry Christmas. Have a cigar. Say, I'm sorry, I still didn't get that name. Thank you, no, not at the moment. Uh... You know how it is, so many strange names down here. Just senor. Uh, yeah, but senor what? In the United States, it is mister. Oh, yeah, yeah, sure. Mister and senor are the same thing. That's right. Uh, what are we talking about? Oh, yeah, it's kids. Christmas and kids. Kids, yeah. You know? <laughs> i got kids of my own and toys. Listen. We've got a line of toys. Yeah, the Argentine, they have a gift day. That's what I say. What can a kid get out of Christmas without a Christmas present? La adoración de los reyes. Beg your pardon? Los reyes are the three kings. Oh, yes. Oh, sure. Yes, yeah, the wise men of the camel. Sure, the adoration of the king. Somebody is telling me. Now, you take Ecuador. Up there, they got a whole different idea. Oh, I've been there doing fast Sure. Sure. To Ecuador and do it right. Regular Christmas trees, presents, kids hang up their stockings just like in the States and sing. Colombia. You know what the kids believe? Huh? They believe that Jesus himself brings them their gifts on Christmas Eve. <laughs> Imagine that. And then there's Peru. Oh, I've been in Peru for Great Christmas. Country. In every home, they make a little old... Wonderful possibilities. I, I was in Lima once myself. Midnight mass. Interesting. Kids all cleaned up bright as a dollar. Carry whistles and things. They imitate the calls of animals and birds. I got a real boot out of it. You in business, senor? Well, after a fashion. Oh, what's your line? Uh, I'm afraid my line is not so popular. Salesmanship, senor. That's what does it. You got to sell these people. Any people. Put a little chocolate on the pill. They'll eat it. And after the chocolate wears off? That was the first time I met him. I wished him a Merry Christmas and left him standing there. <laughs> To Rio at 4.25, took a taxi to the hotel. Good night, eh, Senor Stone. Come back. Uh, oh, that's right. Hey, we receive your wire, Senor Stone. Your room is prepared for you. Bright people, these Brazilians. They know the answer, speak English, got an army. Uh, Tell the boys uh, to take my... You were standing there. Yeah. But Senor... Stand there in the lobby with a smile on his face, though he'd been waiting for me. Expecting me. Did you have a pleasant trip, I hope? Look, how'd you get here ahead of me? There's only one plane. You weren't on it. Tonight I have a surprise for you. Surprise? You're interested in Christmas celebrations, and so tonight, if you like, we are to be guests at a Brazilian home. Put yourself in my place. I'm not superstitious. Don't believe in that stuff. He got around a little too much and too quick. What was he selling? Competition, maybe. Looking up my lead. Why'd he want to take me to that Brazilian home? What did I do in a Brazilian home? My firm does export in a wholesale house. Senor Freixoto, may I present my friend, Mr. Stone, of the United States of North America. 
It is a great pleasure to make your acquaintance, Senor Stone. I do. I present my wife, Emily. Glad to meet you. My son, Joao. Uh, hello. Hello. My little son, Jaime Franklin Delano Peixoto. Uh, hello. Hello. And my only daughter, Dalva. Hey, it's a pleasure. Pleasure. Look here, I, I've got a pocket full of cigars on me. Havana's imported. Uh, have one? Obrigado. You, Senor? Thank you, no. Kids sat around listening to this talk. You know how kids are. I decided I'd have to send them something. Electric crane or football or something. Mr. Stone, did you know about Misa de Gallo? Oh, yeah. Uh, yes. In Brazil, Misa de Gallo comes after the Christmas Eve supper. Yes, very interesting. It is when one day greets the next. The mass of the rooster. They come from far places in the country to attend his first mass. I can imagine. Christmas Eve in the States, we stay up most of the night. Then you know what it is to wait for the midnight. Here, perhaps, it is different a little. The air is warm, the night is soft and full of flowers, and there are children around you and the women. All are quiet, you understand. You can hear only the whisper of the silk in their dresses as they breathe. They are waiting. Santa Claus? The bells. The first bells that told the people the king was born. Always re- we remember back to that day. The bells. Yeah. Yeah, well, we got bells in New York. Oh, oh, that's up. Some of our people say that God was not born in Bethlehem. Huh? I wonder, does anyone think that in New York? Oh, I... It is said that God was born here in Brazil, in the city of Bahia. Oh, what makes them think that? It gives them joy to think it. And Mr. Pichotta took me over to a cupboard where they had a presepio. Ever seen a presepio? It's a little tiny thing. You cup your hands around your eyes and look at it, and you might think it was real. You've seen something like it here in the States. Three wise men, little tiny figures, the Holy Family, the Star of Bethlehem, and the animals looking in the manger. Got the whole thing. Regular miniature picture of the nativity. Then Mrs. Pashoda and the little girl came in from the kitchen. The little girl was real cute. In North America, they have them too, don't they? They have Sao Nicolau. Uh, have who in the United States, little girl? Sao Nicolau. Santa Claus? No, no. Sao Nicolau. Only we call him Papa Noel, mostly. Yes. Uh, what does your Papa Noel of Sao Nicolau look like? Oh, he's the most wonderful. He is fat and funny. Oh. And always he laughs. Sure. And he likes little girls and boys. It's Santa Claus. That's Santa oh, Claus. Oh, so Nicolau. Okay, so Nicolau. That's what I meant, little girl. So Nicolau. Come, my friends. It is time for some dinner. One chair at the table stood empty. I figured somebody in the family was dead and they'd set the place on a sentiment. On our way back to the hotel, I asked the senor about it. Uh, senor, somebody die in that family? No, not recently. Uh, Did you like Senor Peixoto and his family? Oh, yes. Of course I like him. That kid, that Dalva. <laughs> Some little girl. <laughs> Say, that empty chair at the table. Oh, that was for the nine-year-old son. They are very attached. Too bad. Yes. He couldn't get here because the plane was full yesterday in Buenos Aires. We stood there for a second. White face poking in. What could I do? A lot of kids in the world. Went up to my room and locked the door. I almost expected to see him sitting there waiting for me. Three cups of coffee and a big breakfast later. Plane left at sunrise. I didn't talk to anybody. 
Got into Bel M on time and spent the night at the airport drinking more coffee. I never spent a longer night than in morning. Mexico City the afternoon of the next day. Bob Buena Airport. It's big and comfortable, and the runways look like arms stretched out to welcome you. I had to stop in Mexico City. I had business. Checked in the reformer and took a hot bath. Did me good. Senor just disappeared. Made up for lost time two days before Christmas and the holidays had already been on for a week. They call it Posadas in Mexico. Giving presents for Christmas is still a new idea down there, like like the bartender of the hotel said. I wish my neighbor well. He wishes me well. These are our gifts. He wished me a healthful posada. <laughs> nice guy. Posadas in Mexican means an inn, a kind of lodging house. People are always going somewhere during the Christmas holiday in Mexico. They visit from house to house. I decided to try and enter into the spirit, and I found a side street restaurant, picked a table in the corner, and sat down. It's the best meal I ever enjoyed. It felt like myself again. Fat man got up on a chair further down, was talking to everybody. He wasn't speaking English, but here's what he said. Lord, senora, senora. We will be after this again. We will make again the Christmas party. You, dear, and Father, you, and you, and you. You will be the holy pilgrims, you and your family. Oh! Uh, Posada, as they call it, it's a regular custom like Christmas carols, only to play. They act it out. Every day for nine days. All over Mexico. Now we will need a very bad man. Bad enough to play the cruel and hearted innkeeper. I am such a one. But not bad enough. <laughs> Who shall it be? I would like very much to play this part. I say no. It was him, all right. I wanted to get up and run. Run just as fast as I could. Stood beside the fat man and smiled at me through the smoke. He chased me all the way across South America. Hey, what do you want with me? The play is beginning. The Mexicans started marching around with their lighted candles. Marching and singing in that funny way of theirs. Now they were knocking at the door of the inn. Knocking. Being an important part of the Posadas. We have come up from Nazareth. Give us shelter in the name of mercy. My wife is great with child. This is a place of business, not of mercy. The inn is full. There is no room for you. I wish I could do something, but I can't. After all, only your roof, no more. Only protection from the night. I beg of you, for her sake, for Mary and her child to be. Please, you embarrass me. There are other innkeepers. After all, why? Is she the only woman in this world who will give birth to a child? Oh, God, who in the coming to save us did not disdain an humble stable. Grant that we may never close our hearts when thou art knocking, so that we may be received into thy night when our own hour comes. The world is filled with children. I have children myself. I love children. But after all... One of the women pulled her child away from him, pushed him behind her. But the senor was looking at me. And the play was over. 
He kept staring at me. Oh, you did not know when we asked you to be innkeeper, senor. What a wonderful actor you are. And the words you said were so real, so, so terrible. It, it made a goose walk over my grave. <laughs> you, you make a very good innkeeper, senor. I once kept an inn. <laughs> left for America the next morning at 7, and I was on it. There was a Cuban in the seat next to me. All he could talk about was Christmas in Havana. It is a sad thing. I will not be home for the Christmas. We have big Christmas trees, you know, and beautiful fireworks and presents for strange little children. Ah, Christmas in Cuba, we never forget any child. <laughs> plane landed at LaGuardia Airport in New York on Christmas Eve. Christmas Eve on Fifth Avenue. Nothing like it. Stores still open, streets jammed with last-minute shoppers, diamonds in the windows weeping to be bought, Santa Claus on every corner. A couple of minutes, I'd be sitting in my own chair by my own tree, playing with little Marty's electric train and listening to the radio. I turned down 50. You guessed it. You're standing right in front of me. Merry Christmas, Mr. Stone. What do you want? You can't blame me. I had a right to that seat on the plane. What else could I do? What would anybody else have done? I got myself to think of, too. Is that wrong? My own kids. I had business, too. It might have meant my job. It isn't fair. I'm only human. So was I once. Merry Christmas, Mr. Stone. Then he wasn't there anymore. I don't know where he went to. I don't know where he came from. I can guess. But I wouldn't like to tell you what my guess is. You'd laugh, maybe. All right, I don't want you to believe that he made a different man out of me. He didn't. Oh, I wrote out a bigger check for my charities this year, more than I could afford. But he thinks all my money is less than I can afford. Well, I've, I've given up my overcoat to the newsboy down there in the street. He'd say it wasn't enough. Sounds crazy, doesn't it? Well, he'd, he'd tell you... But they made fun of the man who was born on Christmas. He'd show you the place in the Bible where it says they mocked Jesus. And they nailed him on the cross. Now I say, and you say, everybody says, that we ought to help our fellow man do everything we can for our fellow man. But we all want something back. Money or love or happiness. Something fair trade or anyway some kind of trade that's only business business of life tell him that and he'd just look at you and say Merry Christmas you know what he'd mean he'd mean that Christmas is the day when Jesus was born who threw the money changers out of the temple we admit we ought to do more, but we, we can't give everything. There's got to be a limit. Is there anybody on earth who doesn't set a limit to what he pays for the privilege of being alive? That innkeeper 2,000 years ago set a limit when he sent Mary away from the door. I set a limit when I didn't give my place to that kid who wanted to be home for Christmas. That was a pretty mean thing to do, all right. Just didn't think. A lot of other people maybe do the same thing. I want to know why somebody else didn't give up their place on the plane. That isn't any argument, I'll admit that. that. That's like saying somebody else will feed the poor. Somebody else will win the war. That's like saying, what does it matter what I do? It does matter. Everything I do matters. My opinion and what I do about it. My vote. My vote on everything. I matter. That's all there is to it. 
The innkeeper said there were other inns and drove off the mother of God. You know, an awful lot of people believe Jesus was God himself. Well, if he was, he came into the world as a man so all men would see how terrible it is not to give shelter to all men. If he was God, he walked the earth as a man to show how much we all matter and to remind us that we were made in his image. Excuse me for going on like this. My friend, the senor, didn't say anything. He just looked at me. But I, I saw that look, and I just thought I ought to tell you what was in it. You're interested in pan-American relations, and that just means human relations means loving your fellow man. Really, just that. Loving him. <laughs> I have to tell you, I'm not going to go out and save souls and grow a halo, but I'm never going to think I love my fellow men just because my next door fellow man loves his fellow men less than I do. I'm not going to think I've got a generous heart because I know somebody that's meaner than I am. When Christmas comes along at least, I'm, I'm going to remember my friend, the Senor. I'm going to try to remember what he came to remind me of. It has everything to do with everything. With Pan-Americanism and this war we're fighting with just being born in the world. I've been up the length of this hemisphere since the holidays began, and I've heard the bells ringing in every land. Christmas bells. Ringing to cheer us up in North and South America. Peace on earth and goodwill toward men. We're fighting for peace on earth. Peace that'll really mean goodwill toward men. I don't know anything more cheerful than that. Generosity, mine works on a budget. So does yours. But we all celebrate Christmas because... Because on that day somebody was born who set no limit to generosity. Gave everything. Even his life. A lot of Americans are giving up their lives tonight for their fellow men. All right, maybe I won't die for anybody. Maybe I'll just die. What happens in the meantime? What can I do? What can I do? If I ever hear myself saying that, I'll remember what my friend would say. He'd just look at me and say, Merry Christmas. You have been listening to a special Christmas broadcast, the seventh in a series of programs about the other Americas, in which the Columbia Broadcasting System is presenting Orson Welles and the Mercury Theater. The Columbia Broadcasting System is the originator of South America's network of stations, La Cadena de las Americas, and provides daily programs to bring about a closer understanding among Americans everywhere. Mr. Wells has recently returned from an eight-month visit to the Latin American countries for the office of the Coordinator of Inter-American Affairs. In the cast tonight, Norman Field played Mr. Piaciotto, the Brazilian. Ted Reed was the American Airlines representative. Pedro de Cordoba was the fat man in Mexico. John Tucker Battle was the Cuban. Hans Conrad was the senor. And Martin Stone was played by Orson Welles. The original music was written by Lucien Morovic. Lud Gluskin conducted the orchestra.